read the words. Read the verse one more time. Okay, yes, before the recording. One more yes, yeah. because of so recording. Read the verse 48 from Vilap Kusumantrali and continue in the purport. O oh, Devi, when will I most affectionately bring the remnants from Krishna's lotus like mouse that were given to me by Danishta before you? And we so, continue the purport on page 191. Yeah. Before we continue commentary from Ananta Das Babaji, we can just remember because last Saturday we were talking a little bit about these words, and we can just remember a few points. How here in these words, very nice words, Parakya Bhava is very prominent. Parakya Bhava, forbidden love between Radha and Mohan. And also we can see here through the words of Raghunath how important is the role of maid servants of Shimata Radharani. She is like a messenger, like a duty. Messenger. Uh, translators, we are hearing the slant translators. Sorry for interrupt, please. Spanish room for me. It's okay. Right. So here we can see from these words, simple words, importance of manjari in loving affairs between Radha and Mohan. And manjari here, Tulsi manjari is a messenger. And she is bringing the messages in the form of flying kisses, like our Gurudev many times were saying. Flying kisses, it means they are hidden kisses. And Krishna is in Andishwar and Radhika is in Yavat. And with full love and passionate eagerness to Please, her love, beloved, Radhika is preparing sweets. But she cannot bring these sweets directly to Krishna, so she is using her manjari, her maidservant, because she has so much trust in her maidservant. And when Manjari brings Krishna these sweets full of Radhika's Mahabhav, he is relishing and then he is giving back his remnants to Radhika. So because he touched with his lips, with his tongue, with his life air, he touched the sweets. The remnants are full of his love. He touched these sweets with his mouth, with his lips, tongue, life air, and sending through Manjari. His hidden kisses, flying kisses, Gurudev is saying, to Radhika. So here we can see how these feelings of minus 
you are mine, are very, very important for confidential sin. Without these strong feelings of, I am yours, but you are mine, like a prominent feelings, it's not possible to render Manjari Bhav, Manjari Seva, very confidential Seva. And Radhika is not giving these sweets to her girlfriends, but she is choosing the most loyal maidservants to send Krishna these sweets because she infused all her passion, all her desires in these sweets. And when Krishna relished it, he also gave to the same messenger, to Manjari, Tulsi Manjari, to bring the back these sweets. So, this is very simple word, words, but it's so full of Ujvala and Unatojvala. Ras. And we can see here how Manjari, Tulsi Manjari is relishing loving affairs between Yugala Kishore, but her minus, feeling of minus, is reserved, is meant only for Radhika. So this is her loyalty. And we should learn this kind of emotional lo loyalty, mental loyalty, service loyalty through someone who is already on perfect stage of Manjariba. I just want to say shortly, when we are still on these words, to bring our Manovrit and Chittavrit a little bit focused on the bhajan of these specific words and different meanings behind these beautiful words. And now Ananta Das Babaji, Chakshuji, will continue purpose. We'll we continue from how merciful the Acharyas are for recording their transcendental experiences in their books. Chakshuji, please hmm? just give a time translators to find where is this you find it is in the new version, 191, and then you go up to four, six, eight, eight lines from down up. Did you find? So there we found. Anapurna, did you find? Yes. Kinkari? No, okay, you don't have. Okay, we can continue. Please, Chakshuji. How merciful the Acharyas are for recording their transcendental experiences in their books. If Swamini's mercy comes from within the Smara, no. 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 or their Labanga, Labanga, my microphone. If Swami's mercy comes from within their smaran or their experiences, then we will sell our hearts to their lotus feet. 
Uh, sorry, Chuck Shujin. Labangalji, you have to fix your mute mic. So what to do? Sri Raghunath Das eagerly cries out, O oh my lords, Rupa and Sanatan, the worship of Raj is one of faithful allegiance. Because the goddess of Vaikuntha, Kamala Devi, did not accept the mood of Raj, she could not attain Govinda's devotional service. Despite performing so many austerities. By following in the footsteps of the gopis, the Upanishads and the sages of the Dandaka forest attained the service of Sri Krishna in Raj. In Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Madhya Lila 9, it is described. The Upanishads all followed the gopis. Accepting the mood of the gopis, they worshipped the son of the queen of Raj and thus attained a place in the gopi group in Raj. In these bodies, they could associate with Krishna in the Rasa Lila. Krishna is born amongst the cowherders and the gopis are his beloved. Krishna does not accept goddesses or any other kind of women for his consorts. The goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, wanted to unite with Krishna in her self-same body. But she did not worship him in allegiance to the Gopikas. In other bodies, other than a Gopi body, the Rasa Lila cannot be attained. Therefore, Veda Vyasa spoke the verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, Allegiance to the gopis reaches perfection in hearing, chanting, and remembering the eager prayers of the acharyas. That is why it is called an internal sadhana. Radhe. So we should stop here because this is crucial point. for attaining Raganuga path to properly understand how to awaken this Raga in our own soul and how to practice and ultimately to attain perfection. And we can see if someone doesn't follow requirements which are necessary to enter in Vraja, like Lakshmi, she didn't that. She couldn't follow these instructions. She couldn't enter in this Rasalil, she couldn't enter in Vrindavan because she couldn't change her Aishwarya mentality. But I will go a little bit 
up from the beginning what Chuck Shuji was reading. And he said, he read, How merciful the Acharyas are for recording their transcendental experiences in their books. So many times we are asking, begging, thinking, when I will receive mercy from our Acharyas. And sometimes we are not aware that we are holding their mercy directly in our hands, that our eyes are coming in the contact with their mercy in the form of written words. This is such an amazing kripa, mercy, of all our acharyas, because they are writing nothing else, especially in Vilapakusumanja. Raghunath is writing nothing else but only his own experience, direct experience, like a Tulasi Manjari, who is the, like a shadow, maid servants of Shimati Radharani. So isn't it mercy that we are coming in the contact with this transcendental world through our ears, but also through our eyes by reading, and also through our tongue by repeating their words. This is great kripa. But Sadaka should learn how to appreciate that kripa and always be aware that this is amazing what happened to his life. I have chance to listen such sublime loving pastimes which are so confidential that even Vrajavasis, what to speak about Vaikuntavasis, Vrajavasis, they are not aware of this loving pastimes of my beloved Yuga Lakishwar. If we put these words of Acharyas and their feelings, then for sure we will fall in love for them. And if we have not fell in love with them, something is really missing in our life. But if we fell in love with Raguna, with Rupa, knowing their eternal position, if we fell in love with Ananta Das Babaji, if we fell in love with our Gurudev, then something is really, really not so good in our devotion life. We have to fall in love. Because there is no anyone in this world who can give us more than they are doing. So, how Baba is writing, how merciful Acharyas are for recording their transcendental experiences in their books. We should understand that what they wrote in their books, their experience, is just a small, small, small particle of their real realizations. They didn't wrote all what they felt, what they did. They just gave a hints.
But these hints, these drops of their realizations are so sweet that can melt every heart which is open to be melted and to be changed. So Chakshuji was reading the next sentence. We were talking, both of us yesterday, we were talking about similar subject. Please, Chakshuji, you can jump. The next sentence is because of, because the, uh, no, sorry. Uh, if Swamini's mercy comes from within their, their Acharyas Smarana, or their experience, then we will sell our hearts to their lotus feet. So this is not only Kripa <clears throat> of Rasika Charyas, but through them Kripa of Shimate Radharani is manifest in their realizations, in their hearts, in their words, their giving, Radharani's Kripa, direct Kripa to the, us, to Sadaka's neophytes, like we are. So we have two reasons to love Acharyas, to be in love with the Acharyas, and to proclaim them like our best, best friends. There is no better friends than them. First reason to fall in love in them because they already wrote and recorded their experience, and in that way they transfer, transfer, sorry, transfer their own Kripa. And second reason is to completely fell in love with Radharani because Radhika transferred her Kripa, causeless, a high tukki Kripa, through the mouth, through the hearts of her beloved maidservants to us, Sadakas. So Radha Kripa is here, <clears throat> Guru Kripa is here, Vaishnava Kripa is here, and one more Kripa is here. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Kripa. Without mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Acharyas would not never ever disclose, reveal this kind of confidential pastimes. So we, if we really feel it, understand it also, it requires some understanding, but through the heart understanding, not through the mind, then we can accept that we are constantly splashed by the waves of ocean of the mercy. Please, if someone can help this poor soul. Jayanandaji. So beautiful. Guru Dev is saying it like I know, Mandala. So, and uh, I'm not so much fortunate, but uh, now I'm now associated with Guru Dev, and then thinking and feeling what is Kripa, what to follow, what kind of feeling we should follow. And then now I'm feeling, we are, you know, like I say, we are like a Pavupada, Narayan Maharaj, and even Gurudev. We, many people 
to sing Sadaka Deha. And uh, I feel Gurudev, what Gurudev want to ask us some feeling. And of course, this is Sai Baba as Manjari. And then today we are reading in, in, in Doshan devotees Sangha. And then I, th at that time I felt Gurudev want to give us like a Manjari's vision. How Manjari was consciousness, conscious to Radhika or how Manjari's eye goes to Sri Radhika. Sometimes we have a tendency to see both Krishna and Radhika. But actually, this is some tendency of, of Gopi Baba and Saki Baba. Like, see, Manjari was, was watching Rasarira, but the Manjari does not see Mohan, Krishna. Interesting. Manjari is watching just lotus feet of Radhika. Nothing else. But the, for, for us, we are so much Sanchari, sometimes we are feeling, you know, we try to see Radha and Krishna both same time. But actually Manjari is not. So Gurudev Guru is always showing us how Manjari is uh, a seer. Which point Gurudev is showing us? This is very interesting. And Goranga Sundra, you are fixing. But for me, you know, sometimes I have tendency to, to, to see neutral way. This is my problem, you know. Sometimes see Saki's perspective. But this is wrong. Sai Baba means always fixing Manjari's perspective, Manjari's feeling. And then, so this Acharya's mercy given us this look. I also, I really feel this fortunate, especially this Virapax Manjari. Anantas Babaji Maharaj give us so nice nectarian support explanation. But also same time as we are feeling just leading Birambak Smari by own self is we feel some limitation. So we always need to hear from others, especially Rashika Vaishna, like Guru Dev. And uh, we have now very fortunate to have you know, association with Chaitanya, Prema, Chaitanya. So he's always giving us so much nice insight. My God. So this is actually which perspective, what is uh, Manjari's vision, what Manjari's concentrate upon. Radhika or Mohan or Seva, you know, this is I, now I'm honestly learning from Gurudev. So what kind of vision Gurudev has, what, what kind of feeling Gurudev has. So not this Sadaka Deha, try to be in Siddha Deha, try to follow her feeling, Guru Manjari's feeling. This is day-to-day -day practice, I feel. So Goranga Sundra explained very nicely how to fix our heart. Also, I'm learning from Gurudev how to fix our, you know, uh, chanchara tendency, sanchari tendency of our mind and heart. So, Rade Rade, thank you very much. Rade Rade, Jayananda Ji. I'm sorry. 
Yes, please, Udavaji. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. It's so nice what you said. And uh, not about me, but uh, about uh, because I'm struggling so much to enter in Gurudev's mood. And like you said, it's not easy. We should really open our feelings, our hearts, to remove all other calculations, misconceptions, and it's not easy, at least for me, to enter and to stay in his mood. Maybe I have a burden from <laughs> previous samskaras of devotional, so-called devotional life, but many young devotees, uh, for them, I feel that it's much more easier. So, I need also the mercy. And uh, I just before Udavaji, uh, I just want to continue on this what uh, Janandaji said actually, that this faithful, my words, <laughs> faithful allegiance to the Vrajavasis. It means to really be in love with Vrajavasis, but in which mood we should be very fixed and define what I really want. And Raghunath is he here is crying and he said, Oh my Lord's Rupa and Sanatan. And when he is crying for them, on one level he is crying because he feels so alone in Sadaka wish because of the absence of their association in that moment. But in the same time, he is glorifying these two persons, Rupa and Sanatana, like his best, best, best friends, which, with which he wants to be always. He doesn't want Radharani without them. He wants to serve together with them. Then he feels complete. And Narutam Das Thakur is saying in Prema Bhakti Chandrika also, I want to be in surrounding with all these beautiful Radharani's maid servants, this kind of sakis. And I'm waiting their order for Seva. And when he is saying this, he is completely in love with all these Manjaris. He has a rati. This is a rati. Not only for Radharani rati, not only for Guru Manjari rati, but for all, all, all Manjaris. He has rati, madness, madness of love for them. And we sadaka, what can we do? Not so much. Honestly to say, not so much. We just have to connect our hearts with their hearts. And this is our sudden. Up and down, left and right, up and down, left and right. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. This is sadhana. This is a practice. This is not perfection. I am on the stage of practice. But if I'm really connected with the heart, to the heart of our beloved Gurudev and other acharyas, Then there is a hope for me. Then there is a hope for me. Hope is coming firm 
firm hope is coming when we are in love. Rati brings hope. Without Rati, no hope. Real strong hope. Only Shraddha, faith, is not enough. Only attraction, taste, ruchi, is not enough. For real hope. So this is the goal of us, Neophytes, Sadakas. Please, Udavi. Udawaji, you have some interruption or? No, I, I was <clears throat> I was melting in your in your words. Um, Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Gurude. I wanted also to continue on the wave that uh, Jainanda had uh, begun. about Sai Bhav and about Guru Bhav and mercy. Mercy is, of course, the, the, the greatest mystery in our, in our practice. Mercy is the realization that there's nothing more to have to obtain, to get, there's only to be. This means that Stai Bhav, this absolutely fixed mood, comes when, at the moment when we realize that there's nothing to have. We don't need any particular qualities, we don't need any particular emotions, we don't attach to anything, we just are in the world. And this is difficult for me personally because we use so much language in our material world about obtaining things, also obtaining obtaining the lotus feet of Guru or obtaining the lotus feet of Radha, we talk about getting them. And actually, the moment when we become one with Guru is the moment when there's nothing to obtain. Not because we have everything, but because we realize there is nothing to have, it is only to be. Guru does not have anything. Guru is everything. So the moment we stop looking, attaching to things that others might give us to bring us higher, that's when we'll be free to go higher. Gurudev will be the first one to tell us, I have nothing to give you, I am nobody. He says this kind of thing often. And it's because he is everything. So, using this as a model, then we can stop being attached to qualities and objects that we think we need to climb the ladder and just be. Where are they? Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Dharajan. Someone more? I don't see everyone here on my screen. Gora Chandra, oh, uh, Goravani, I see Goravani, yeah.
Radhe Radhe Gorachandra. <laughs> you wanted to say something. No, no, no. I, I just want to wake you up, but you were already wake up here. I'm really sorry. We disturb you in your deep meditation. Goranga Sunda. We speak about how much mercy coming by the words of Raghunathas Goswami. He mentioned the mercy of Dacharya. He mentioned the mercy of Gurudev. He mentioned the mercy of Radharani. And he mentioned also mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But one more mercy we also need. We need mercy of Nitai. Without Nitai, we cannot get Goranga, and without Goranga, we cannot get Radha Moha. Raghunatha Goswami is the great example that you cannot just go to Mahaprabhu. He tried to do that, but Mahaprabhu sent him back, go home again. Finally, he got the mercy of Nitai first and then he could go to Mahaprabhu. And it was such a beautiful time spending together. Raghunath, Rupa, Sanata, Goranga, Haridas Thakur, all relishing together. Then Raghunath going to Radha Kunda. Mahaprabhu left. Sanatan left. Rupa left. Everyone left. He was broken. He wanted to commit suicide on the bank of Radha Kunda. But Janava Markham and say, no, please don't do. You have to help the devotees. Then he wrote Vilap Kusumanjali. Every day at the bank of Radakon, he speak three hours Gaurakata to the devotee. Imagine how you feel when the most beloved devotees all left you and you every day you talking about them. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami listening every day three hours Gaura Katha from Raghunath Das Goswami. After that, he write Chaitanya Charitamrit. Wherever you look, to every direction, every devotee playing so important part in the mission of Goranga Mahaprabhu. I don't know. And what he's writing, what he's sharing with us is full of the bhav.
Yesterday there was Japanese lecture about Q and A. Sometimes we are shy to ask, we think that asking question is something to require to get some knowledge, some information. But in the Raga Bhakti is not like that. In the Raga Bhakti, I'm asking question only to listen from the mouth of my Gurudev. His words are full of mu because he's so pure pure instrument of his Gurudev and all the parampara. And to some extent, this mood of Gurudev also coming through the disciples of Gurudev who take shelter in his Lord's feet. So it's important that we are always under the guidance. Then we can speak this kata. If this not happen, then we only share information and we can read all the books, but everything only stay on the mental level, only in the mind not going to the heart, but we must listen. Jayananda Maharaj, so nice, he always say, we must listen from the Rasika Vaishnava. Why? Not to get information or knowledge, to get the vibration, to get the mood, that the mood through our ears, through our mind can go deep in our heart. So we should always eager to listen and to ask questions. Only that Gurudev open his mouth and say something. Gurudev, why Krishna Wearing yellow dhoti. Uh, everybody knows the answer. But we want to listen from the mouth of Gurudev because of the moon. And Raghunath is a Prayojan. Acharya for Prayojan, for the goal. I feel that we also have to be totally broken, totally hopeless, totally finished with this material world. Then we can cry. Maybe we can cry like Raguna. Daddy. Thank you, Guru Chandra. Thank you very much for this sharing. Following the mood is essential part of our practice. And it's not easy because the mind always has a tendency to speak his own things. But we are not listening our heart. We should try to learn how to listen with the heart, catch the mood in that moment, and continue to flow according to that. I remember in my beginning with Gurudev, when I didn't know him, 
Well, I still don't know him well. But in really very, very beginning, he was talking his sweet kata, and suddenly some question appears in my mind and some thoughts. And I said that. And one time, he told me, why you are asking this? You are breaking the mood. You have to listen more carefully and catch the flow. And if something you want to ask, just ask according to that flow. Later on, you can ask other questions. And it reminds me what Gorachandra said now. We are not listening here to receive informations, but to taste, to develop more ruchi, more taste. And this is only possible if we follow the flow. And if something comes out of this flow, then is real turning the nectar between devotees. Thank you, Gorachandra. I'm sorry I, uh, I saw Goravani. Please, Goravani. Radha, Radha. Rade, Rade. I was just uh, uh, thinking or feeling about what Udava said, what Gora Chandra said, and what Goranga Sundara said, and try to find some picture of that how this goes together. And I was thinking that the six Goswamis, they were very, very learned persons. They were not like me. You know, such a bump from this time here. Uh, stupefied by all he made wrong in the past. They were actually very, very high-level persons, even from the material platform. So how, for me, it's possible to follow them? Actually, impossible. Impossible. For me, impossible. I have to, to be honest. So, but Udava said in that moment, when I was down like that, he said, you just have to be in the mercy, more or less, he said, like this, you just have to be where you have to be in the mercy. So, yes, and this is our good luck, because actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is bringing not the mercy of Krishna. We don't have to have any qualities, we don't have to have any any good uh, character even. Even if we are against all this, even if we are against devotees, the mercy will reach us. And only if we strongly stay on the point that we don't want it, it will go away. But if we don't stay in that, at that point, and open our heart just a little bit, the flood will come in, the flood of the mercy of Radharani, which is represented by Nitai here, or in the back we have our Panchatattva, which is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that form, like, come, come all in my arms of love. Because this is the love of Radharani, which means 
if you see it from the tattvic point, this is the mother coming for us. If you see it in rasa, then you have to hear from persons who are in rasa. But from the tattvic point already, it is so wonderful, because wherever we are, whatever dirt we have, in what position ever we are, we just have to be what we are. The little, small, helpless child of Radharani. And then Nitai will take us in the arm and lead us through Gurudev, through the mercy of other Vaishnavas who actually have these feelings in their heart and share these feelings. Because we know the fastest way to learn from a person is not to hear the knowledge. Like, you have to cook like this and you have to follow that and you, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And, you know, all this, yes, it's basic. But this person will give us some tricks. You know, after 10 years following this recipe, I realized that you can do it like this and it's going faster and better. Much more taste. You will never get this if you are not in some bandha with such a realized person. So, if we are in some bandha with such a merciful soul who got the mercy of Radharani, who is living in the mercy of Nitai all the time, and we connect with them, then the mercy of Nitai will stream also in our heart, if we just don't close it completely. So this gives me strong hope, actually. And tomorrow we will actually read about Radharasa Sudha Nidhi verse 1. And it's the same topic. I was just wondering, because we are already speaking about this topic, so tomorrow we will go on. <laughs> Thank you all very much for your mercy and kindness. Radhe Radhe Gauravani Ji, thank you very much. Everything is going simultaneously because Kripa is always pervading all stages, all consciousness, all devotees. But like you said, we just have to open the hearts. So, it doesn't matter on which level we are. Hearts has to be on the level, not our abilities. This is useless hope. <laughs> Chakshuji. Meanwhile, in Yabat, after sending Tulasi to Nandishwara, Sri Radhika has fainted out of powerful feelings of separation from Krishna. And the Sakis are unable to bring her back to her senses. Then, Tulasi comes back from Nandishwara. So the role of Sakis, very close friends of Shimata Radharani, is one, and the role of Manjaris, the most confidential maidservants of Shimata Radharani is another one. So we can see how when Radhika faints, her sakis, her girlfriends, close girlfriends, intimate girlfriends, cannot bring him, bring her to the consciousness. And now Tulasi is coming on the stage of Lila. So this is Even superiority. Before. Yeah, <clears throat> please. Even cool things like lotus stems, lotus pollen, Ushira, vetiver, camphor, sandal paste, and lotus flowers 
were not able to bring down Gandavika's hot fever of separation from Krishna. Just then, one Saki, Tulasi, came from Nandishwara and began to sprinkle Radhika's ear holes with drops of the nectar-like stories about Krishna being ordered by Lalita. So Lalita, Vishaka, Tungavidya and so other gopis, they tried everything to pacify Shumata Radharani, to bring her to the consciousness. Because the burning fire of separation was so strong, they couldn't do it. They tried to put a lot of pollen, then tried to put a camphor, sandal paste, lotus flowers, and so on and so on. But nothing worked. And little girl, Tulsi Manjari appears on that place. And he started to sprinkle. When someone is fainting, usually people are trying to sprinkle him or her with the drops of water, cold water, to bring him back. But the only coolness for Radhika is to be, is the words, are the words, sorry, cooling, sweet, nectarian words of Manjari, who is talking her about her beloved what he was doing, how he looks like, how he is suffering for her, which kind of message he sent, and so on, what he is doing. And so, this is, so here is a very, very significant thing, that hearing is the only medicine for the suffering heart. This is the power of drinking through the ears. And now devotees, we here, sadakas, ordinary devotees, we have also opportunity to drink just a little bit these drops of eternal pastimes, drops of Radhika's feelings, drops of Manjari's feelings. Isn't it? So the most powerful process actually is not Smaran, is the Shravana. Because without Shravana, what will practice Smarana? I have to hear something which will catch my mind. I will develop attachment and then I will think about that. But if I am listening and I don't feel anything, then the process of remembrance will never start. In the beginning, hearing is important, and especially when devotee develops a taste, attachment, Rati, like Gorachanda is saying, he needs more hearing than before. He's, he's, he's becoming addicted to hearing. This is addiction, actually. Bhakti yoga is addiction. There is no much greater addiction than bhakti. And special, which kind of bhakti? Listening the glories of Srimati Radhika through the mouth of her maidservants. And this is addiction. This is the medicine for the broken heart. Gurudev is the master of love, and he is the fixer of broken hearts. And all our acharyas, they are fixing our broken hearts. Like 
Because of that, Gauravani said, this is the only hope. This is the only hope. They have to fix our broken hearts and try to put us in the normal position. <laughs> yes. We are like Guru Dev say, abnormal, why? Because we have broken hearts. Our egos broke everything good in us. So we should try to develop another spiritual identity. And in that way, fix by the mercy our broken hearts. Well, our Chaitanya Prima want to share. <coughs> oh, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, dear devotees. Radhe Radhe Chaitanya Prima. First uh, of all, I feel uh, deeply ashamed in front of uh, Jayananda's humbleness. Um, he moved me deeply by his humbleness and I love him so much. I would like to be humble as he is. But by Gurudev's mercy, it just came something to me why Gopis could not wake up Radharani. Gurudev is uh, saying now very often, uh, Bhagavad Gita verse 10 15, that Krishna, as it is, can be known only by his internal potency, which is Radharani. So, gopis cannot offer Radharani Krishna as it is, because they have some hidden desire to meet with him. And only Manjaris, who are totally, completely surrendered to lotus feet of Radharani, without any selfish desire, they know Krishna as Radharan is Krishna. And they can offer this Krishna, explain about this Krishna to Radharani as he is. Radharani. My beautiful, my beautiful actors. <coughs> Listen to the <coughs> Guru Dev say <coughs> to to me, to us. Actually, one Manjari Baba, Baba Urasarasa, or Manjari Baba, is when our material desire finished, then dear Baba Urasarasa is coming. So Chaitanya, Premaji, Chaitanya Prema saying, why Gopi could not awaken Radharani? Because Gopi has some hidden desire. So I feel, <coughs> just seeing Gurudev, what do we need? And then our material desire should be zero. Of course, that is, it takes time. It takes time and according to a situation and uh, circumstance may be difficult. But actually, <coughs> today Guru Dev is saying, whenever you live in family life or brahmachari, sannyasi, it doesn't matter. Just mind fixing one point. So this is uh, these days Guru Dev's real <coughs> express to us how to fix it. Especially I <laughs> I try to check my mind. Oh my mind which you want which direction you want to go? You want to deviate or you want to fix it? This is uh, Guru David's word. 
we are doing homework. So Chaitanya uh, give us very nice insights. Rade, rade. Thank you very much, Chaitanya Jananda Ji. Dr. Ji. Radhika immediately comes back to her senses, sits down and says, Oh, Saki, in my dream, my desert-like ears suddenly felt a shower of nectar. Lalita says, Oh, fair-faced Saki, it is Tulasi Manjuri who has come back from the abode of the Queen of Raj. She brought you back to your senses by sprinkling you with the nectar of your friend Krishna's pastimes. Swamini sees Tulasi before her and embraces her. Swaminiji has an extraordinary love for Tulasi. She knows that Tulasi has come back after serving her wholeheartedly. Again, Tulasi serves her Swamini in an extraordinary way by sprinkling her ears with the nectar of Krishna's afternoon pastimes. Swamini asks Tulasi, What did Mother Yashoda say? Tulasi says, Hey, Shyamaju, how can I describe Mother Yashoda's affection as she held her forehead on mine, calling me your maidservant? Lovely, lovingly, she held her forehead on my forehead and inquired about your welfare intoxicated by ecstatic love. How much love the Queen of Raj gave me, knowing me to be yours. So this is the Tulasi's proudness. Mother Yashoda loves you, my dear Swamini, so much. And I'm so proud because you are the object of her love. You are the object of Krishna's love, Mother Yashoda's love. You are the object of love of everyone. So I am proud to have such kind of mistress. You are my Devi. I am very, very proud for that. And I'm very proud because you marked me in so many ways. You marked me by giving me the clothes, the dress, which you like that I wear. You mark me by giving me the color of my body, which you like to see me in with that color of body. You mark me by giving me seva, which you like that I serve you. You mark me with my kunja, in which you like to see me and engage me to prepare that kunja for your loving affairs with your beloved Mohan. You marked me in so many ways, with your glances, with your embraces, with your ornaments, 
I became simply like you. You touch me with everything what you are and what you possess. And in that way, you transform me. To, to be your bud. Manjari, in the bud form has everything which Radhika mercifully gave to them. And their bud form is also Radhika's mark. Through the Guru, through the Guru Manjari. And this is the reason why Manjari is so effective in wakening up. Because the Manjari Radharani, because she is so marked inside, outside, everywhere with the Radharani's marks of love. And when she is talking about Krishna's pastimes in the afternoon, it's so nectarian for Radharani's ears. And when we sadhakas sometimes read the Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's pastimes, in the afternoon with Gopas, with Mother Yashoda, we should remember from which angle, from which angle we should learn this, listen these pastimes. And always remember these pastimes are meant to suit Radharani's heart. It's not out of Radharani, independent of Radharani. And many books which our Acharyas was writing were written from Manjari Bhav perspective. Even if they are glorifying Krishna, still in that way they are feeding, they are sprinkled Radharani's ears, Radharani's heart, deep, deep, deep inside of their words. But for that, like Gurudev is saying, you should be first situated in your Sai Baba to understand from which angle, which perspective you are listening about Krishna's pastimes. To fix your Baba. If you cannot do it, then better not. Yeah. Swamini pulls Tulasi on her lap and repeatedly asks her, He has eaten nicely, hasn't he? I couldn't cook so nicely. I'm sure he didn't like the sweets. You were close by, weren't you? Swamini sorrowly questions Tulasi. And fortunate Tulasi gives sweet answers to all the questions. Thus, rendering a wonderful service by submerging Swamini in the nectar ocean of talks about Krishna. Danista has given me some remnants of Krishna's food and I brought it with me for you. <clears throat> we can feel Radharani's insecurity in her attempt to give the Krishna's pleasure. This kind of insecurity 
I'm sure he didn't like the sweets which I cooked. It's a momentary emotions which is coming because of intense love. When you love someone, you always caring. Did I did this properly? Would he or she be pleased? This is the mood, especially of pure love. And this is very subtle feeling of insecurity. We can, we have a experience that in material world, when we are insecure about something, it can damage us. It can damage also the others. But this is very negative emotion. But we can see here how all emotions in Radharani's heart are present and they are increasing and showing her love for Mohan. She is not secure. Did I cook nicely? What happened? Did he like it? And because of this passing, Vyabhicharibha, Emotion. Her love is increasing more. And also Manjari who is witnessing this. Is so amazed. To see Radhika in that loving mood. Very subtle emotion is here. Sri Radhika is like a Chutaka bird that does not eat anything else but the nectar from Krishna's lips. As soon as she hears about this nectar, the thirst of her ears and her heart is immediately quenched. Didn't he say anything to you? She asks Tulasi. How can he in front of his superiors? Tulasi answers. With his eyes, he asked me if he could meet you tonight in Vrindavan. And I told him, also with the hints from my eyes, surely you will meet her. Swamini says, Tulasi, look at me once. I am so fortunate, I am so unfortunate that I could not see him personally. Let me see if he is hidden in your eyes or not. And she gazes into Lassie's eyes without blinking. Her eyes are full of tears and her body is shivering of ecstatic love. When I look into your eyes, I can understand that you have seen him. Otherwise, your eyes could never have been so beautiful. Swamini says, What a wonderful service Tulasi is rendering by carrying Krishna's picture to Swamini in her eyes. Blessed is this maid servant. Now, Srimati starts to take her meal. How wonderful is Tulasi's expertise 
in devotional service. Shri Banga Bihari Vityalankara writes, Shri Radhika is called the Devi in this text because she is the eternal consort of Deva, Ajuta. Srimad Bhagavadam ends with Devanam Ajuta Yatha. Of all the gods, Ajuta, the infallible Shri Krishna, is the greatest. Therefore, of all the goddesses, Sri Radhika is also the greatest. Sri Haribar Shila sings, O oh, Gunavati, qualified girl Radhe, Oh, my mistress, I pray to you so fervently. When will Sri Danishta, your dearest girlfriend, most carefully hand me Krishna's food remnants? When will I carry Krishna's remnants on my head? and place them before you. When can I fill my eyes with the sweet vision of Unamadini, love intoxicated rye, seeing and smelling the pusha? So this is the end of the purport. Radhe. Please, Chakshuji, last words in a commentary. When will I? When will I carry Krishna's remnants on my head and place them before you? This is Manjariba. I will not keep these remnants for myself. With full respect and love, I will keep them on my head and to place before my Swami. The same thing Manjari is saying directly to Radhika. I will keep your offering to become your Friend, Saki, I will keep that offering, your offering, direct offer, on my head. So it means, with full respect, I don't want that. This is the expression when I say, yes, I will put your instruction on my head. But actually, my desire is to become your maidservant. Or in this case, my only desire is to bring these sweet flying kisses to your nectarian lips. This is my life. This is my only life. When I see how you are intoxicated by smelling and seeing this prashad, this is Bhavo Lasa Prati. We can stop here. Chakshuji, you can read again the words. Yes, O oh Devi, Goddess, when will I most affectionately bring the remnants from Krishna's lotus-like mouse that were given to me by Tanishta before you? Thank you. Thank you, Chakshin. Thank you.
You are reading so nicely. Everyone, I can see from the faces of devotees how they are relishing your reading. Slow, sweet, emotional reading. Thank you very By much. By the mercy of the devotees, one can develop qualities. <laughs> yeah, you are the example. <laughs> Radhe Radhe Gauravani, thank you very much. Udawaji, Gaurachandra, my dear brothers, sisters also. Gurudev, is it here? Dhanavad, Dhanavad. Radhe Radhe, thank you very much. Beautiful. 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 <coughs>